I'd like to talk a little bit more about the subject of community and specifically godly community. You know, there's been a, a number of teachings that, um, that I've done that are related to fellowshipping or developing a church, but really when you get together, when we get together, what we're doing is we're creating what uh, people call a community. A community is any group of people who are coming together and there's a sense of belonging. There's a sense of being part of a group. And I do believe there are absolutely some characteristics that are evident in godly communities. So I would like to go over some of those characteristics. I think the first characteristic is a godly community is inclusive. And when I say inclusive, I mean it, it basically seeks to include as many people as possible. It doesn't necessarily, you know, isn't just cutting people out, but it, it wants to be as far reaching and have borders that are down so that as many people feel welcomed and, and belonging to it. I believe there are some scriptures that, that demonstrate godly community. One is in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 and it says, be witnesses unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Jesus Christ said, go to the uttermost parts of the, wor the world. You know, spread the gospel and that's to develop that sense of inclusiveness. In, in, remember in um, the Gospel of John, verse 316, it says, God says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes, see, whoever, that's inclusive. There is a sense of it being exclusive in that there's a condition. You have to believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. But the sense was that God wants whoever believes. So a godly community is definitely has the a hallmark of being inclusive. It wants to, it seeks to include as many as possible. Another uh, uh, characteristic of godly community is diversity. When I say diversity, I mean the sense that there's a lot of different colors, a lot of different flavors amongst the people. There's a variety of gifts, a variety of callings. Not everybody looks the same, dresses the same, acts the same. There's great diversity and that there, there's unity in the diversity. We celebrate the diversity. We celebrate the various colors and, and all of the different aspects and gifts and calling that people can bring. It says in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1, that God will have all men to be saved. All men. If you're going to have all men, in the word men meaning all humankind, all men and women, there's going to be diversity. There's going to be genetic, or not genetic, there's going to be gender diversity, men and women. There's going to be ethnic diversity, meaning all races, all, um, you know, black, white, you know, green, purple, doesn't matter what color you are. There's diversity. There's also diversity of culture, you know, because God wants all humankind to be saved. Another aspect of godly community is what I call authenticity. There's honesty. You know, there's, if there's problems, that those things are raised and they're brought out into the open. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13, it says, speaking the truth in love. It literally, it's truthing it. You know, with, if there's gotta be authenticity, there's gotta be a genuineness. And it also says in Colossians 3, 3 9, don't lie to one another. You're not gonna have a godly community if you're having a lot of withholds, if you're a lot of having what I call a lot of faking it, you know, you've got to be authentic. You've got to be in there in the fight. Another aspect is there's mutuality. Mutuality means is that we're concerned for the mutual good of all. It's not that, that the community just benefits a certain few and others are there to, to just to serve, you know, for, for an elite group. There's mutuality. There's concern one for another. In fact, all of the one another verses, which there's a lot of, you know, the one anothering, to love one another, to forgive one another, to be with one another, to honor one another, to serve one another. See, these are all verses that, that, um, that speak of the mutuality of a godly community. And to build up one another, you know. There's also, I believe, sympathy. Godly community demonstrates sympathy. The sympathy is in the sense of the Galatians verses about carrying one another's burdens. You know, and also in 1 Thessalonians 3.14, to, 
to support the weak. And then Ephesians 4.32, to be compassionate with one another. Compassion, compassion, with passion. Passion is that internal sense of burning, fiery emotion. And I, ha I have with passion for you. For you, I'm concerned about you. I'm concerned about the needs and that, that you're being taken care of as well as you being concerned that I am. It's not just all about me, but it's, I'm concerned about you and you concerned about me. There's mutuality. And there's, there's that sympathy. When, a, when one of our uh, brothers or sisters is hurting, we have compassion for them. There's also mercy. Mercy is, is the, is, is, is demonstrated through forgiveness and kindness and, and goodness and, and bringing people up and reaching into the needs of people. Uh, Colossians 3.13 says to forgive one another and, thir and Romans 13.7 says to accept one another. To accept one another, I have to have mercy. You know, when we see people in need and want, you know, it's just have the bowels of mercy come up within us and we desire to help. In a godly community, there's also humility. You know, pride destroys community. Humility builds one another. It says in James 3.16 to confess our sins one to another. You're not going to be able to confess your sins if you're not humble. You know, for me to come to you and to confess my sins, I have to humble myself. And I have to say, you know, sister, I've offended or I've sinned. Or when someone comes and confronts me about a behavior that I did, and if I'm wrong, I have to be humble and be able to say, I'm sorry, please forgive me. That takes humility. And godly community is going to have a great sense of humility. Humility towards God, humility towards Jesus, and humility towards one another. There's also courtesy. I, I believe that, you know, in 1 Thessalonians 5, uh, I believe 15, it says to be kind to one another. And that's just courtesy. That's just allowing another to go first. You know, it's, it's you know, it, it, these are all, in some ways, they're all parts of like a soccer ball where they're all evident and they're all related to one another. But courtesy, mercy, humility, they're all related. You know, when I'm courteous, I just allow another to go first. I allow another to step forward. I allow another to be given credit. I'm courteous. It's just kindness. And also in Colossians 3.13 again, to bear with one another, to bear with an, one another. I mean, how so many times we, you know, we're offended and then right away we want to let our mind out and, you know, just, well, this is what you did. And, and, you know, I think sometimes we can just be courteous and do what God says, overlook a matter. You know, someone offends you, just first response is just overlook it. It's no big deal. I can be courteous in this situation. And another aspect is there's got to be confidentiality. Sometimes one of the biggest things that I've seen that has destroyed community is people with mouths that just want to run. In fact, I think ungodly communication is a source of great harm and great hurt in the body of Christ. There's gossip, there's slander, there's whispering, there's backbiting. You know, nowadays we live in a culture where anybody given a computer and a keyboard thinks they can express any thought they want at any time about anything, and they do and they cause great harm. Sometimes we just need to zip it and just hold those thoughts. Just because you have them doesn't mean you necessarily need to express them. Now I understand godly community has authenticity, but believe me, that doesn't mean that authenticity means that I just need to let my, mu my mind run wild and say anything on my mind. You know, we've now got a culture that I think the devil's promoting between blogs and everything else is anybody can say anything they want through Twitters and Facebooks and blogs about anything at any time. And it's just let, let, let your brain and your mouth run wild. And it's not right. I believe godly community has confidentiality. James 4.11 says, don't slander one another. And James 3.9 says, don't grumble against each other. You know, if there's going to be godly community, a person who has a sin has to feel a sense that they can come and confess that sin and I'm not going to repeat it. And another aspect of godly community is frequency. You got to get together. Do not forsake meeting together. I believe if you look at these, inclusive, diversity, authenticity, mutuality, mercy, sympathy, humility, courtesy, confidentiality, and frequency, if you practice that, you'll have godly community.